Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, tens of billions of pandemic aid may have gone to people and companies who didn't need it. Will the feds ever claw it back? And with rates popping up again this week, the impact on affordability. Plus, when a death happens at a workplace, you would hope at least that change would result. That's all ahead. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. As expected, the Bank of Canada raised interest rates this week, the half percentage point hike taking its rate to four and a quarter percent, a move promptly followed by Canada's biggest banks, which now have prime rates above six percent. If there's any good news, it's that the central bank is signaling it may be at or very near the end of hikes. We've got a lot of data between now um, and that late January meeting that I think is going to dictate whether they do um, go with one more move or not. But, you know, certainly they've um, set the table to, uh, to hit pause as soon as January. Higher costs may be pushing Canadians deeper into debt. Non-mortgage debt jumped 7.3% in the three months ending in September to an average of $21,183. Credit card debt was up 17.3% to an all-time high. Experts are watching cautiously as average payments on credit debt drops and auto loan delinquencies tick higher. Well, don't count on relief from high prices at the grocery store. The annual food price report says the food bill for a typical family will rise by almost $1,000 this year. It's the biggest one-year jump in the report's 12-year history. That's a 10% increase from the year before. The bad news, the authors of the report don't expect much relief in the year to come. If you talk to any food companies out there, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll be telling you that their costs are going up still uh, today. And so we're gonna feel the impact of that as consumers over the next six months. Grocery execs defended themselves against accusations of profiteering from inflation. Testifying before a parliamentary committee this week, Loblaw and Empire Company reps said they raise prices when suppliers do, arguing that their profit on food has stayed stable, while other products such as pharmacy are driving the growth in their bottom line. It was one for the books in Ingersoll, Ontario this week, with the first of GM's electric delivery vans rolling off the retooled line at the Cami assembly plant. Provincial and federal governments kicked in half a billion of the total cost. The newly refurbished plant employs 400 people for now. And those are your business briefs. Canada's pandemic support for individuals and business was quick and generous. Turns out so generous that billions of dollars went to people and organizations that didn't qualify. And there's little evidence of it being meaningfully recouped. Karen Hogan is the Auditor General of Canada. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Thanks. So the number on that kind of questionable amount that we might look into is about $27 billion. It's it, it stacks up against $211 billion that went out. So is that a reasonable amount to have a question mark over? It's less than 10%. You know, I've been asked that question before, and it's really hard to say um, because this is unusual time. So you don't really have a way to measure what's the normal output. Um, this just shows, though, the need that when you limit prepayment controls, you really have to do some postpayment work to verify eligibility. There is a fairly sizable number uh, of those that just were not valid. Um, do we have a sense that the government will recoup that four plus billion dollars that went to recipients that simply shouldn't have received it in your analysis? Well, for the $4.6 billion that was overpaid to ineligible individuals, they, they are in the process of reaching out to all of them. Um, I can't predict what the outcome will be from that, but at least they're addressing that. It's the other $27.4 billion where they really do need to do more work. You definitely aren't saying that the aid wasn't effective. And in fact, that's a word you use in your report. This was an effective use of emergency aid. It's a lack of controls, I think, is that you're highlighting here. Any sense of what the controls could look like now? It does have to be after the fact because this happened so quickly. What could we be doing that we're not doing to make sure that money isn't wasted going to people and maybe especially businesses that it shouldn't have? Well, what we recommended is that the government really has to increase the amount of post-payment work that they're doing to verify ineligibility. That has to be your first question, to determine if individuals and businesses were eligible for the, the money they received. Then the next question becomes about collection. And, and that's where the government can take a compassionate approach if they'd like. We recommend they be clear to Canadians, but you have to first identify those ineligible. 
And of course, you will be aware and have been um, obviously uh, made aware of the government's response to this. It's an unusual one. Normally, the government takes recommendations by the Auditor General, um, it, you know, under advisement at the very least. It's just a bit of a pushback here. Uh, what do you make of the response? Well, I made that they agreed with us, that they do need to follow up uh, with individuals and businesses, but they don't have the resources to follow up with every single person potentially ineligible or every business ineligible. And that's why I encourage if they want to take a different approach, they be transparent and clear with Canadians, because that's one of the greatest things about our country is you can expect to be treated fairly. And that's all we want is every taxpayer to be treated fairly. So would you expect behavior to change by the government in terms of the amount of uh, controls that are put in place? Or do you think they should turn around and say, we're going to let this all slide. It's just going to stay in people's pockets. Well, I would expect them to do more work. That's what they're required to do the, under the existing legislation. Um, if they don't want to do that, I recommend that they be really clear and transparent with everyone so that people can expect, uh, know what's expected of them. You know, are they expected to pay back or not? People shouldn't be wondering that. Businesses shouldn't be wondering that. They should just know clearly what the expectation is. Thank you so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Karen Hogan is the Auditor General of Canada. Coming up, we know a lot of the inflation we face is imported and beyond our control, but how much is made in Canada? Stay with us.